I'm really <clears throat> glad to see all of you once again. Uh, you know, we had uh, some of you were participating in our program uh, back when we had uh, no relation to myself. I, I wish I could claim relationship to him, but Don, Don Fraser was uh, with us talking about the uh, life there at uh, what it was like in the Gilded Age for people who were working in the service industry. And uh, it was a very difficult job. Well, tonight, uh, we're going to hear about one of the other estates on the Hudson River. And uh, that estate is Wilderstein, of course. And the speaker this evening is, is Catherine Chirapko. Uh, Catherine is uh, relatively new to Dutchess County, but... Uh, her connection with uh, Wilderstein, even though she did not know it at the time, goes back to when she was about five years old. Uh, she and her family were living in Switzerland. And I don't know if I'm going to pronounce the name of the place correctly, but at one point at, at that time, she and her family spent some time staying at a uh, site there in Switzerland called the uh, Chateau de, I think is, a, that's probably not the correct pronunciation, is it, Catherine? It's Chateau de. Chateau de, okay. Mountain Resort. And, and the significance of that is that now that she is working as the, uh, I think the title is assistant director at Wilderstein. Um, you know, back, that was one of the places where the Sukles had lived. It, it was the place where they lived when they were in Switzerland uh, many years before Catherine had an opportunity to be there. Uh, but Catherine, has uh, spent most of her life in, actually, uh, she's married to uh, someone who was a, is an architect and a painter, and they lived in New York City. Uh, but in the, uh, in 2017, she and her husband moved here and live at the intersection of Mill Road and Morton Road. And many of you probably know that location because at that intersection uh, for quite a few, I mean, over a hundred years, there has been a schoolhouse there known as the Morton School. Uh, and that was the schoolhouse where it was mostly the children of families who worked at Ellerslie, at Wilderstein, uh, and uh, nearby uh, states. Uh, those children went to school in that house, and she and her husband have uh, renovated, restored uh, that site, and she happened to start volunteering as a docent at Wilderstein, and uh, lo and behold, a position became available, and Catherine is now the uh, assistant director there. And she's here this evening because there's interesting stuff taking place, uh, especially up on the second floor at Wilderstein. She's going to tell us a little bit about it. She's going to start with an overview of Wilderstein. I know that may seem redundant to some of us, uh, but there may be even, even those of us who think we know a lot about Wilderstein may have something to learn from that background. Uh, and then she's going to give us more specifics about what's happening up there, uh, the extensive restoration work in, in preparation for actually opening it up to the public. So I, I'm not here giving the talk. It's Catherine. So I am turning it over to Catherine. Delighted to have you with us tonight, Catherine. Thank you all, first of all, for inviting me. Um, this came about because I did a talk for the docents back in April um, while we were all trying to stay connected to one another about the second floor um, and the restoration that was taking place up there. And um, I went up and took photographs of Duane and Linda's work and 
all of the wonderful craftspeople that we've had doing extensive renovations um, and restoration of furniture and wallpaper and electrical um, fixtures, et cetera. And I'm happy to report that having put that um, PowerPoint together back in April, I had to go back and redo it all because so much more has happened in the intervening um, six months. So what I would like to do, first of all, is thank you all for being here with, with this group tonight. It's really my pleasure and um, privilege to be with you. And I, um, when I talk to a group that knows probably more about the history of the organization that I am discussing, um, I, I hope that you will bear with me. Um, and I know that you do record this and then post it. So there may be some people later on who watch the video for whom the background um, and context will be particularly helpful. So here we are, Wilderstein um, and the wonderful new logo that we have. Um, what I'm gonna do is um, go through some slides at the beginning just to give a um, background. Um, for those of you who have taken the tour of Wilderstein, you'll notice that I'm going through um, many of the same things that we talk about on the guided tours but um, not necessarily in the same order. So um, what I'm gonna do is do a brief presentation of Wilderstein today, sort of a welcome to the property. We'll take a tour of the exterior and the first floor, which is what is currently offered for our visitors um, who come to us uh, from spring through uh, the fall and um, some years at Christmas time. We'll then take a quick spin through the Sukli family and introduce you to the family tree, talk about the fortune and where it came from, and unfortunately the decline. And then certainly Wilderstein's most famous resident, um, Margaret Sukli, who was known to most as Daisy and her relationship with Frank Franklin Roosevelt. And then we'll go into the creation of Wilderstein Preservation um, which was done by Daisy in 1980. And we'll talk a little bit about what continues, the restoration that continues at Wilderstein today and well into the future, I'm certain. First of all, um, as a little bit of background, um, the Sukleys have, um, the Sukli family has resided on the property at Wilderstein for 150 years. Um, the property was first purchased in 1852 um, by um, George Sukley. Um, and he originally built what was then thought of as an Italianate villa. What you see today was the, is a Queen Anne Victorian mansion, which was built in 1888. It was commissioned um, by um, George, uh, Thomas, Thomas's son, Robert, um, who commissioned it in 1888 uh, and hired Arnott Cannon um, as the architect. And Joseph Burr Tiffany, who was a cousin of um, the famous Tiffany's to do the interiors. The exterior was designed by Vox and Company, which is Calvert Vox, um, who is famous for working um, in design in partnership um, and designed Central Park and quite a number of other uh, famous landscapes. On the property, there is also an ice house, a potting house, a greenhouse, a carriage house, and the gate lodge. And I'm gonna take you through and so show photographs of each of these. First of all, many people ask us what the name Wilderstein comes from. And there is a petroglyph on a large rock, which is down by the water, down by the river. And you can see a picture of what it looks like here. And the thinking is that this is described as a wild man in, in a stone. And so Wilder is sort of a, um, an approximation of German for wild and Stein for stone. This is a picture of 
um, the drawings for the original Italianate villa, um, which was built in 1852, um, the east elevation of that um, property, which was a, a fairly modest building um, built, uh, as I said, in 1852. When Thomas Sukley died, his son, um, Robert, inherited the property. Um, that was in about approximately in 1852, and or I'm sorry, in 1888. And he decided that this particular property was not grand enough for him and his family. And so he commissioned, as I mentioned before, are not canon to expand it. And fortunately, um, they did not need to tear it down. They just built their building around the outside. And this is a picture of Wilderstein um, as it um, came to uh, the Preservation Society um, back in the late um, 18, in the 1980s, prior to restoration. And as you know, um, a great deal of restoration has occurred over these years. And I am happy to show you a photograph of what it looks like today. Um, what an enormous change. Um, we describe the style of the home as American um, Queen Anne. And it is um, typified by the multicolors um, the steep roof of the tower on the back, and all of the great deal of um, detail all around um, the veranda and the wonderful slate roof. And it really is a very whimsical, um, beautiful type of um, design. One thing to point out is this wonderful um, structure here which is known as a porte cochere. Um, and this was the place where um, coaches would arrive and drop off visitors who would then enter the home through the main door right here. You'll notice that the building is now um, four stories plus a five story. You can't see it terribly well from here, but you can see the tower sticking up behind. Um, and the two story Italianate villa is just encapsulated within this building. Um, we now have a first floor, which is very ornately um, decorated um, by the firm um, headed by Joseph Burr Tiffany. And I'll take you inside in just a few moments to see some of those photos. The part that we've been working on most recently is in here in this second floor, which is where the bedrooms are. Um, for the uh, immediate family. Mr. and Mrs. Sukley have bedrooms there. Um, and then there are several guest rooms. Um, and we'll take you inside and show you those. Back in this area here, since we're not going in physically into the building, I'll point out right there that when we go in, that will be the library down here, behind here. And then to orient you, um, this is the white and gold room and the parlor back there. Another view of um, Wilderstein, the mansion. Here's the port cochere, the front steps up to the front door. This room here was an office that was put in for Mr. Sukli so he could run his business without having folks going all the way through the home. And then these are the library windows here. Um, one of the other, um, magnificent portions of Wilderstein is the beautiful, beautiful stained glass windows um, that are throughout the home. And we'll see some of those in the pictures in just a moment. This portion of the house here is um, the servants' quarters. And in the addition of 1888, servants' quarters were added on to the house to provide um, plenty of household help to run this large home. This, this portion of the house today is actually an apartment, um, which is uh, rented um, and provides security and just having someone on the property at all times, which is quite beneficial to um, the running of the 
the organization. One thing, you can't see them real well, but these little things, if you ever go to the property up there, there are florist, floral shaped um, little outcrop, uh, little metal things that are actually um, lightning rods. Um, and one of the things that's quite wonderful about the fact that the Sukleys lived in the house for all of these years is that we have record upon record upon record, box and box and boxes. And so when the renovation was being done, the, rest, the restoration was being done, we were able to determine with a great deal of certainty and accuracy, the paint colors, um, the source for the slate on the roof. Um, and fortunately that quarry was still available. And so when the roof had to be redone, um, they were able to go back and actually get slate from the same quarry that it had come from originally. You'll notice lots of chimneys throughout. Um, some are for the furnaces, some are for fireplaces within um, the home. This is a, a lovely shot of the veranda. You can see it's very wide and was a spot where um, one could entertain, take tea, um, uh, be outside of um, and catch the breezes coming off the river um, and view the beautiful landscape, which extends um, to the east, to the south and all around the, the home. Notice how tall the ceilings are and also this wonderful parquet on the bottom of the, the uh, or on the, the roof of the veranda and the lovely colors and all of the detail in the posts holding up the, um, the roof. All of the, one of the things that is also unusual about Wilderstein as a historic house mansion um, is the museum rather, is that everything that is in the mansion is from the family and from the mansion itself. We didn't have to go out and purchase additional things. Much has had to be restored and certainly fabrics have had to be restored and purchased, but the actual furnishings are all original to the home. This is a, um, a plan of all of the property original from Vox and Company. And you can see the mansion here, and then the, um, the circular driveway, and then many of the, um, the trails and roads, oops, that were um, put in uh, for um, wandering around what was known as a romantic uh, landscape. This is a view looking um, south, Um, you can see it's tiny down here, but that's the Esopus Lighthouse. Um, and notice all the wonderful trees. Um, one of the things um, from a preservation point of view that you um, undoubtedly will find interesting is that, of course, this viewscape has been um, restored. Um, much, many of the trees grow up. It's a very steep uh, incline down to the river into the um, railroad tracks. And so um, that was uh, cleared and now is maintained most years by a herd of goats um, that we are lucky enough to invite to come and feast on all of the vegetation that grows up year, year upon year. Um, as you may um, know from many other uh, things that you know about the Hudson River, um, there was a boathouse down below and um, uh, Daisy and the family enjoyed as many did ice fishing or ice boating and um, cruising up and down the Hudson River. Um, this particular site was selected um, by um, Thomas Sukley, Daisy's grandfather, um, originally um, because of the view. They, they had, in fact, looked at several other potential properties, but this one was so um, unusual in that we are on a cove. And so you get the south view as well as a nice panorama 
from the east and, and west also. Some of the plantings um, that were specified were really remarkable and we're fortunate that every year in the spring, if you come here, you'll see these gorgeous red bud um, bushes, which are huge um, and just spectacular. These are um, three of the other um, buildings on the property. And you'll notice um, we have the little potting house here, um, which originally was connected to long greenhouses where the family could grow. Um, I, I believe it was Mr. Sukli's particular passion to grow chrysanthemums. Um, and so there were great greenhouses running along. Um, this prop, this uh, building here is the carriage house. Um, which has been stabilized and is one of the hoped for projects of the future to um, bring that back to its former glory. Um, but a number of years ago, uh, the um, board and our friends uh, contributed enough to make it um, stable so that it will not deteriorate any further. And then the building over here, I don't know if all of you can see it, depending upon where you're, um, where you've got the rest of us showing up on your screen. Um, this is the ice house, um, which is uh, slightly down um, the hill from the main house. And this is um, the gatehouse as it looked um, when it was first built in um, about 1891. Um, this has now been expanded a couple of times and in fact um, is where uh, the offices for Wilderstein are. Uh, Greg and I have our offices there. And um, in its expansion, a, an apartment was put on the second floor. And so there's a tenant um, that is living in that apartment. Now let's take a quick tour of the first floor of Wilderstein. Um, as you come through those front doors, which I pointed out before, you'll arrive um, into the entry hall. Um, and one of the things uh, that's quite interesting about the design that Joseph Burr Tiffany did for this first floor is that each room is quite distinct and different from the others. Um, one of the themes that does recur in several of the rooms, however, is sort of a um, three-banded treatment of the walls. So um, in this entry hall, what you'll notice, the, the picture is a little bit dark, so I do apologize, but um, you'll notice that um, the lowest um, bit of wall treatment is quarter sewn oak. Um, then above that, there is a band of, um, you can probably see it best back here, of uh, tooled leather. Um, and then the top frieze is a plaster frieze, um, which is um, stylized and painted to um, reflect a, a metal look. Many people, when they look at it, think that it is in fact tin or something like that, but it is actually plaster. Um, we have, as I mentioned, uh, the furnishings in here. And this um, particular, as you went in and to your right, you would see this fireplace, which I don't believe was ever used, um, but it's quite lovely. And we have um, griffins here. Oops, I keep moving. Sorry about that. Um, griffins were a part of the um, coat of arms of um, Robert Sukley's wife, um, Elizabeth Bessie. Um, and so they were incorporated in several places in the design of the interiors. 
you'll see them again in the next slide. There's a wonderful griffin here holding up a lamp. And then um, if you are lucky enough to come for a tour, you'll notice that the sconces on the walls also have griffins. When taking a tour of the first floor, the, first, the next room that one would go to is in here through this doorway into the library. And this is the state of the library prior to restoration. You'll notice um, that there's a great deal of um, damage to the ceiling. Um, there was a leak, the roof was leaking. And so um, the whole thing had to be replastered and uh, repainted. Um, and here is what it looks like now. This, this up here um, is all done in paint and gold leaf, a very ornate um, pattern, which uh, fortunately they were able to restore and replicate. This room is described as being in the Flemish style. Um, it is uh, quite cozy. Um, it's the, the lowest ceiling. Um, room in the in the uh, first floor of the mansion. And one thing that I particularly love are the stained glass windows that are at the back of the room here. Um, they're very, very impressionistic, quite different from what you might typically find in, in stained glass of that era, which was much more represent representative. Um, Toward the end of Daisy's life, um, when she was in this home uh, by herself, she moved down here actually, and she used this room as her bedroom. Um, so restoring it back to being a library was um, a very important part of the restoration process. You'll notice um, a lamp here, a um, hanging lamp, and then there's a small lamp over here. Um, and the home, um, Mr. Sukli was always very, very interested in the most recent um, innovations and technologies. And so the house um, was electrified um, very early on. The electricity was provided from a dam over on the Landsman Kill um, and came into the house on direct current um, and was uh, so that they had to um, convert a number of years later uh, to alternating current. And you'll notice if you come that a number of the lamps um, where there were many, many um, bulbs, there's just now the one current bulb. One of the things that's fun, depending upon the age of the people that you take through the tour, is to point out this old telephone Many of many people have never seen one like that. If you have some youngsters with you, the next room that I'm going to take you to is the dining room, um, and the dining room is descri described as being in an English Renaissance style. And again, the three banding here. Um, this room is mahogany um, on this level, and then. Um, wool and silk, and then there are coffered ceilings, which you can see better in the next picture that I will show you. Right now we have it set, the table set as if we were having Thanksgiving dinner together, um, using some of the china and glassware and silver from the collection. Um, Linda Watson and I had a wonderful time going through and um, selecting some things from the collection. Um, in this photo here, you can see the um, impressive fireplace in the room. Um, and again, the coffered ceiling is a little bit easier to see in this photograph. I'll quickly take you into what um, is now a small kitchen, um, but was originally the butler's pantry. Um, and you can see the, all of the original sink. Um, the original um, call system for calling the servants and the original telephone, which of course 
was originally um, a party line. And in the cabinets in there um, are displayed some of the quite fancy china that we put on the table for Thanksgiving, and then some of the more um, plebeian things like giant's glasses. Um, we've now gone out of uh, the dining room, back through the hallway, um, and into what's known as the white and gold salon. This is probably the most um, fancy or elegant room in the building, um, and is also unfortunately in um, the greatest state of disrepair. Um, the wall coverings in here are um, made of silk um, and is uh, torn um, in to uh, make it stiff. It was leaded um, and so it has become very heavy and fallen off, um, but there is lovely gold leaf still um, on the walls. The ceiling um, is a lovely um, mural. Um, and there is an Aubusson carpet, um, which uh, was made as a wall-to-wall -wall carpet and snaps down all around here. If you come to visit, you can see a wonderful picture of it. Finally, um, let's go into the um, parlor, which is in the colonial revival style. In here, the wood um, woodwork such as it is, is cherry wood. There's not nearly as much as you notice. There's much more of the wool tapestry fabric um, going around here, but nonetheless, um, three levels with a frieze across the top. Uh, the um, portraits, oh, I'm gonna go back again, sorry. The portraits in here are of um, Robert Sukley and his mother, um, Catherine. All of the furniture, as I mentioned, um, is uh, original to the home. And one particularly poignant um, piece is this little rocker right here, which is a charming little Victorian wicker rocker, which belonged to um, the firstborn child of um, Robert and Bessie, um, a little boy named Rutson, who lived to be five years old and then perished. And his chair was kept there in his honor and memory. Another view of the room. We prominently display a tea set um, because um, having people for afternoon tea was one of um, Miss Sukley's um, particular joys and traditions. I've mentioned the Sukleys a couple of times, but I should probably tell you who everybody was. Um, George and Catherine Rutson were the um, original um, Sukleys that we talk about. George came to the United to the country to the to the uh, in the late 1700s and married a woman named Catherine Rutson, who was descended from the Beekman um, family. He, um, his son, Thomas Holly Sukley, is the first person who's actually affiliated with um, Wilderstein. And he married a woman named Catherine Murray Bone. Um, and they were the ones who built and lived in or used um, the uh, Italianate villa that was first on the property. Upon the death of Thomas Sukley, Robert Sukley inherited um, the property and he and his wife, Elizabeth Phillips Montgomery, um, used the home as a summer home and, week and um, uh, country retreat throughout their marriage. They had seven children. Um, the uh, Firstborn, Rutson, who I mentioned earlier, um, and then the next boy, Henry, and then Robert, who you'll often hear referred to as Robin, and then Arthur. And then um, finally, a little girl, Margaret, 
who was born um, in 1891. And um, she is the one that we talk about Daisy. Um, Marguerite um, is the French version of Margaret. And Marguerite also refers to the small daisy flower. Catherine and Elizabeth were the final children, twin girls. And here are some portraits of um, the family. This is um, George and his wife, Catherine. And we don't have, uh, if you come to the mansion, you'll find that this portrait hangs in the front entry hall. Next, um, we have Thomas and his Catherine. Um, and unfortunately, although we have a lovely portrait of her, um, we do not have a picture of Thomas. Um, so there are, there are a couple of um, portraits that people are trying to confirm are of him, um, but to date, they are not confirmed. So we are being strictly um, accurate on that. Um, and then here's the family that used Wilderstein most. Um, this is um, Robert and his wife, Elizabeth, who most of the time was known as Bessie. And here are, here is Bessie surrounded by all of her set, her six children at that point. Um, unfortunately, Rutzen was, was already gone. Um, and so we, or I'm sorry, so we've got Henry, Robert, Arthur, Margaret, Catherine, and Elizabeth. And um, probably for some attempt at not being too confusing, Elizabeth, the mother, went by Bessie, and Elizabeth, the daughter, went by Betty. This picture was taken shortly before the family embarked um, for Switzerland. Um, as was mentioned by Michael at the beginning, um, the family spent a good number of years, close to a decade, living in Switzerland. In um, 1893, there was a, um, a downturn, a severe downturn in the uh, financial markets and in the real estate markets. And uh, Robert um, lost a great deal of his um, assets and income. And so the family uh, decided to depart for um, Europe and specifically Chateau Day in Switzerland, where they could live more economically. So this is a wonderful um, passenger list that survives from their trip on um, the ship heading out. Um, and you'll notice, I don't, again, I don't know where you have all your, um, your uh, people, but over here on the right-hand side, you can see the list of the Sukli family all traveling together along with their two nurses. And they were traveling um, in the most expensive class. Here we are in Chateau Day, um, and that is the Hotel Pension Rosa. Um, and even in that, those days, you can see the wonderful um, ski piste, as they're known there, the, the um, roots down. And then this picture of um, a group of folks um, taking a sleigh ride, I thought was particularly charming. These are, um, after the, the, um, the family returned um, from Europe in various varying stages, the uh, Henry, the eldest came back to go to prep school and then college. Um, the other boys came back later and also um, went to prep school for a bit um, and attended some college. But the eldest son, Henry, um, became involved in the American Field Service which was an ambulance corps. Um, and he um, unfortunately died um, in, prior actually to the war, to the US even getting into the war 
uh, by was killed by a bomb in Albania. Um, his two brothers did also, Robert and Arthur, join and were stationed um, in France and somewhere else, I cannot recall where. Um, and here's a, a picture of approximately the same time of the three daughters. This is um, Margaret, Daisy here, and the twin girls. And then this one when they're having a little bit more fun. This is Daisy on the left um, and Catherine and Elizabeth on the right with the donkey. Um, one of the things that's particularly interesting about Daisy is that, and many know that she was very much involved with Franklin Roosevelt. And in fact, they were distant cousins. If you take the Sukleys all the way up through the Beekmans um, and then FDR up through his family. And this is just uh, a representation of the, the family genealogy. And here's a picture of a, a Daisy working at the FDR library. Um, she worked for her cousin, her aunt also, but um, she was working at the FDR library during his lifetime and then afterwards also. Daisy also, as you probably know, these pictures of her with FDR, um, she went on one of his train trips with him. And then she was quite well known for giving um, FDR his little dog, Fala, um, which we celebrated this year with our Fala Gala um, for our summer fundraiser. I wanted to give you just one little picture of, um, unfortunately, all of the um, children, of all of the children, only one, um, Betty, got married. And she did, in fact, um, have several children, three children, but none of them was in a position to take over um, Wilderstein. Um, and so there were no um, heirs to take on Wilderstein. And so Wilderstein Preservation was established in 1980 um, by Miss Sukley Daisy. And um, she is quoted as saying, I hope it is going to be a fuse. I hope it's going to be preserved for what is worth preserving in it. Um, and here she sits um, in front of the building um, in the state in which she was living in it until the end when she died in 1991, just six months shy of her 100th birthday. So now let's head up to the second floor, um, which was um, the uh, advertised topic of this talk. Um, and you're getting a sneak preview of this. Um, very few folks get to go up there. So this is the staircase from the entry hall that you saw um, as we went in. And you'll notice the lovely um, uh, stained glass and the beautiful um, woodwork as we climb the stairs. Oops, oh, sorry. Okay, um, these are the things that, that had to be done. Decluttering and cataloging, the electrical work needed to be completely repaired. The plaster was repaired, repainting. We reproduced a great deal of wallpaper. Um, the fixtures and the hardware needed to be cleaned and repaired. And the furniture, again, was some only needed to be cleaned and some needed to be repaired and some, um, uh, we've done some reupholstery and we've been trying to create some historically accurate rooms. This is a um, plan of the entire second floor of um, the mansion, but the portions that we will visit are these. This is, um, you'll notice uh, we have a bamboo room. This is Sukli's room. 
Mr. Sukley's room, the landing. And this we, we as used as a guest room, but was originally designed to be Mrs. Sukley's dressing room. The reason that the mahogany room is in blue is because um, uh, it has not um, undergone restoration. The hallway, when you come to the top of the stairs, these are photographs of that. Along um, the greatest portion of it is a um, grass cloth wallpaper. And then there is a lovely border um, along the top. This enormous um, Victorian mirror um, stands uh, in the hallway also. These were taken back in April and at present we actually have put some new carpeting just to protect the floors when we begin giving tours. This is um, a picture of uh, Mrs. Sukley's bedroom. <clears throat> and you can see why it was that we needed to do a bit of decluttering. The Sukleys, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, kept a great deal of um, papers and um, uh, an awful lot of um, just stuff. Um, this is what the bamboo room looked like. Um, before the restoration. Now, this is um, the furniture that's in the bamboo room, as we call it. And although it looks um, like bamboo, it is actually tiger maple, which has been stylized um, and carved to look like bamboo. These, this uh, furniture was in quite good shape um, and really only needed cleaning. And this is how it looks today. The little rocker um, in the center, of course, um, did require recaning, um, but um, the other parts of the furniture were actually quite, quite good. Um, please notice um, the wallpaper in this room, um, because the wallpaper was, in fact, a little piece of it was found, um, and it was then. Um, recreated um, for us. And look at these little details. If you looked at the uh, uh, furniture, you wouldn't even guess that it is not um, bamboo. This is a washstand over here that you can see the, um, the rail for towels, etc. And this is how the room looks today. Um, the curtains have been hung. They were, um, we're not sure whether they were necessarily in this bedroom, but they um, are from the collection um, and were hung in this room. And then you'll notice that there, we've put up pictures that were representative of um, the family's excursions. One thing that's kind of interesting to me about the way that architecture was done then and is quite different from today is that this doorway here goes directly into another bedroom. And the, the bedrooms were quite connected to one another. Um, this is just a, a, a picture of um, the electrician as he was um, climbing into the um, closet at the top of the stairs and having to get down and pull the wires through the floorboards from one room into the next. Um, and you can see the state of the, um, the plaster and pulling all of the, um, channeling the, the conduits under the floorboards and then up through the walls to come out to be able to put the sconces in both Mr. and Mrs. Sukley's bedrooms. The entire um, second floor was completely rewired. Um, this is a, a picture in process of um, the plastering in um, Mrs. Sukley's bedroom. And you can see uh, scaffolding had to go in um, for us to be able to, um, there's somebody many of you will know, uh, Dwayne Watson, um, uh, getting his um, exercise and um, 
uh, helping uh, doing some of the scraping in the bedroom. Um, and then the entire thing was replastered. This is a before and after of Mrs. Sukley's bedroom. <clears throat> As you can imagine, one of the things that's very hard to do in a restoration like this is to um, get the colors to match as closely as um, we want them to. And the lighting changes so dramatically in the rooms based upon the weather and upon the time of day. And so Greg and um, Greg Sakaris, who's the executive director and Dwayne and Linda um, and the painters um, go up and um, spend a great deal of time doing samples um, and picking the, the correct uh, shades to um, faithfully show what Mrs. Sukley's bedroom would have looked like. And here we are today with three views into Mrs. Sukley's bedroom. We do know that the furniture that's in here is in fact the furniture that was in her um, bedroom. It was provided by Bauman and Company, which was a furniture company in New York City. The suites of furniture were ordered and we have the bills from those. Um, and um, certain things we know from uh, papers. And then we were fortunate enough. Um, and again, one of the, the most wonderful parts about taking over um, a building uh, from when there is still a surviving uh, heir um, is that Daisy walked around. There's an oral history of her walking around the mansion and describing um, pictures and paintings and uh, furniture and where things are located um, and the life that actually went on in the mansion. Um, One of the um, sort of tragic things about Mrs. Sukley's bedroom, this uh, photograph is a picture of um, the chiffonier, which sits directly across from her bed. Um, and the painting that hangs above the chiffonier is of uh, Rutzen as a little boy. Um, and so uh, this is what, um, she woke up to every morning and went to bed, um, presumably looking at every night. Um, also, we have stylized on their uh, photographs in, of the girls um, as little girls um, in these charming um, Dutch uh, porcelain frames. And here's another view looking into Mrs. Sukley's bedroom from the other angle. Um, just to show you uh, the amount of work that went into um, this restoration of the fixtures. These are two of the sconces prior to, to restoration and then how beautiful they look now. Um, interestingly enough, Mr. Sukley's bedroom, this is in his room, and the, the metal color in his room is silver um, or platinum, uh, whereas throughout the rest of the house, it's actually a yellow or brass color. Uh, this is the replastering of the walls and ceiling of Mr. Sukley's bedroom. You can see the state of repair, you can see all the way down to the um, wood here. Um, and this arch indicates the, the connection of the main part of the house to the tower that stands, the five-story tower that stands behind and is connected to the house. So this is circular, which doesn't um, uh, show up as much in the picture as, as in person. Um, this may be a better representation of it you can see that it is a circular um, part of the room. And the wonderful part here is that you then can come in here and get views in this direction, going down toward the river 
and then um, north and a little bit northwest here. This is the furniture or two pieces of the furniture that were in Mr. Sukli's bedroom. This here is a shaving um, uh, unit. Um, and then this other um, uh, chest of drawers with mirror. And then this is the most magnificent um, and probably um, undoubtedly, I'm not even gonna say probably, undoubtedly the heaviest piece of furniture in the, in the, in the mansion. Um, this is a folding bed. Um, we would today typically talk about Murphy beds, but the Murphy company didn't exist in those days. So this was actually a folding bed. Um, and what I'm representing in this photograph is the bed in its down position. And so a mattress would be here across these wooden or these metal slats. And then it can be folded up. Um, and then there is a wonderful mirror um, on the bottom side, which would be on the underneath part here. Um, and this right now um, is essentially upside down. This would be the portion that connects. Um, so you can see some close-ups of the hardware um, and we had to have um, someone rebuild all of or some portions of the hardware so that it will go up and down still although I would not want to try it myself and here is the room as it is going to be mostly it's mostly ready for how we're going to show it um, Mr. Sukli loved to play the violin and so we have um, his violin out in its case and then on his bedside table, pictures of his wife and children, and then the, the boys in their army uniform and the eldest Henry um, on his way to college. More close-ups in Mr. Sukley's bedroom. This little room um, is uh, being used, as, will be shown as a guest room, which it was at various times, but originally was the dressing room uh, for Mrs. Sukley's bedroom. And the wallpaper in this bedroom, um, mercifully and very fortunately, is actually in good enough shape that um, we will be able to just clean it up um, and put a little bed in this room. Uh, to be able to treat it as a guest room. This, um, oh, I'm a little bit out of order here, I apologize. This is a close up of the um, wallpaper from the bamboo room, which was reproduced for us by David Berman at Trustworth Studios. And this is just showing that inside a closet, was where we found a piece um, that we were able to take out to, or to not take out, but to um, be able to show, to have the, um, the faithful reproduction done. This is some of the hardware before and after. Just think it's quite remarkable to see what, um, mostly Duane um, has been able to do um, in terms of cleaning this up and then having it reinstalled. These are the um, pulls for the windows and a full hardware set. Another little oddity, this is actually Mr. Um, Sukli's bedroom and this porcelain um, doorknob appears only in his room. Um, this is the last room on the second floor that I'm going to show you. And interestingly enough, it's, it's known as the mahogany bedroom. Um, and that's because the furniture in here is mahogany. Um, and this would have been used as a guest room. 
But, but prior to restoration, this was the room that was in the best shape. And so um, when decisions were being made about what to um, restore, um, this one was like, oh, this one's still in pretty good shape. But now that the rest of the rooms have been brought back to their splendor, um, it certainly pales um, by comparison. It, the furniture in here um, is also, you know, quite beautiful, um, but has not been um, restored. And you see the entrance here I was mentioning into the bamboo room. I mentioned earlier that um, Robert Sukli, Mr. Sukli, was very, very interested in all things um, uh, new and um, innovative at the time. And so the home had, um, I think these are great, these wonderful push button um, electric switches. And then this is the fuse box. And then there's actually an alarm system the original alarm system, the bell is still there. It is not connected any longer. We have a much more up-to-date alarm system currently. Um, thank goodness. So taking you back to show all of the fruits of the work that um, people have done um, over the years. Here's the before picture and the after picture. Before, <laughs> and remember what those rooms. And then here we are um, going back downstairs. Oops, sorry about that. Um, if you'd like to get involved and learn more, um, these are my suggestions. Um, you can become a member if you aren't already. I know many on the um, call are. Um, become a volunteer. Uh, we are always looking for folks who would be willing to be a greeter um, in our gift shop and be the first person, first friendly face that greets our visitors docents that take people on the guided tours. And then of course, um, uh, we do have four landscape work days uh, per year. Please come and visit for a guided tour. We are open this Thanksgiving um, on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And then we will be back next summer, spring, spring, summer, and fall. We don't know exactly how, um, but, um, and in what capacity, but we will be back and at least as much as we've been doing this year. You can buy a book, um, Wil Wilderstein and the Sukles, Closest Companions, The True Story of Fowler are all available actually from the website. Um, we have very limited things for sale, but we do have a few. And you can visit the website. Um, there's uh, some great photos and information there. This is just a picture of one of our tours. Um, and you can see how interested our visitors are. We're delighted to have every one of them come and visit us. And then just to show that nothing is ever really finished at Wilderstein, this is what's been happening um, in the last weeks. Um, the tower um, has been repainted um, and we have um, uh, a man up on a cherry picker. And right now he's up there on a ladder. And we have been lucky enough that the weather has held so that he can get his work almost finished before the snows come. Thank you. Wow. Oh. Wow. Yeah. I've been uh, by Wilderstein Many, many times, Catherine, and have read about it, admired it, 
And little did I realize uh, so many of the details that you've you've shared with us this evening. This is this is really great. Thank you so much. Uh, what I'd like to do is we have a little time for a few questions and. Uh, what I'd suggest is that folks uh, write their question to everyone in the chat box. And uh, I'm going to start with one that I just received from John Vincent. Uh, John's question, Catherine, is can you tell us what the st uh, state is of the Daisy Supley diary transcriptions? Is uh, do you know where that is at? I don't know. I'm terribly sorry to stay. No, I don't. Um, the um, the interview ha was transcribed and that is available. But the diaries, uh, if, if that's what you mean, um, do you mean the, the, um, the John, interview? If you, you want to unmute yourself uh, and uh, answer Catherine's question. You need to unmute yourself, John. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, some six months ago or so, Mary Hathaway mentioned that it was halfway done. So I didn't know if it was near completion or will it be um, available to um, the public? You know, I, I honestly, John, I don't know. The, the, um, the oral history that I have listened to um, has fully been transcribed. But there may be more um, that I'm not aware of. Um, we'd have to go back to Dwayne and Linda and ask them about that. Also, any idea of, of the um, the years that uh, it might have had gas lights and when the electricity first began? It never had gas lights. It was um, electrified right from the get-go. Catherine, we have we have a question from uh, Eve Dambra. Are the upstairs rooms open on the Thanksgiving weekend tours? Uh, and she also, by the way, wants to thank you for a wonderful talk. Thank you. Um, unfortunately not. We're still figuring out how we're going to do the upstairs tours. Um, uh, I believe that we will try to open those up in the probably in the summer of next year. Um, and it'll probably be one tour a day that would be separate. Our challenge around the second floor is that um, sort of the walk that I took you up the staircase is the only way in and out of the second floor. And so we have some egress challenges um, and um, we're working those out. Thank you. Thank Another you. question, Catherine, has to do with the uh, understanding that some folks have had is that initially um, the second floor was just uh, room after room was packed with boxes of documents and uh, curious where those documents have gone. Ah, well, um, that's kind of fun. They're, they're in lots of places. Um, most, most have been cataloged um, and I was lucky enough um, for the first time, although I've been with World of Time for a while, to get to go to the third floor. Um, and on the third floor, um, there are stacks and stacks of um, boxes that contain um, all sorts of uh, papers and um, uh, fabrics and all of those are um, uh, in um, acid-free paper so that they're protected. And then we have some of our um, very valuable things actually in a special storage offsite. Um, but most of the um, material was just um, sort of organized and then stacked. So. Um, even though it came from more rooms, you can fit it in because there's shelving, et cetera. Question from uh, Allison Wallen uh, regarding the library, as mentioned, you mentioned that as the cozy's room uh, having the lowest ceiling. 
in the rest of the house, uh, how tall and how high are the ceilings? I don't know exactly much of it. I would say on the second floor, they've got to be about 10 feet high, 10 to 10 to 11 feet, and probably on the first floor, 12 or so. Are, are there plans, uh, David Byers is asking, to reinstall the Aubusson carpet in the gold room? I don't believe so. Not at present. It's very, very delicate. Yeah. Um, yeah. And protecting it would be very difficult. I think in, you know, hopefully someday when we have more um, uh, space where we can do real exhibits, it might be displayed in, in a gallery. Perhaps um, people talk about the carriage house having some gallery space. Um, at some point that would be. And a, a number of folks uh, again, are thanking you for an absolutely wonderful talk. Uh, you know, clearly quite a bit of research went into preparing your talk and even many, many more hours. We saw a little bit of it from Dwayne Watson plastering the ceiling, uh, and straightening out, uh, repairing, uh, cleaning up some of that hardware. But, uh, you know, enormous amount of work there in uh, getting the place able to be presented to the public and restored so wonderfully, carefully, and lovingly as, as Wilderstein has done. Uh, well, and I, I have to um, compliment uh, the, the people. This has been a, a community endeavor from the beginning and a labor of love. Um, when you go back, um, I had the privilege of, of going back and reading all of the newsletters that people used to put out. And it was just, it, and it still is a merry band of volunteers that keep the place going. Um, all of our tours are done by volunteer docents. All of the greeters are volunteers. Um, it's it's extraordinary, um, and they do it cheerfully and with dedication. Um, and they're not on the call now, but I have to give a particular thanks to Linda and Dwayne Watson, who share their encyclopedic knowledge mm -hmm. with a great deal of generosity and patience as I mix up the two Catherines um, and everything else. Um, and they also provided cheerfully photographs um, at the last minutes. And suddenly I was in Greg's office saying, don't you have a good picture of such and such? Um, and he was digging through his computer to find them for me. So okay. it's, it's a great group and I am, um, Really very, very thankful. We're going to sign off very shortly, Catherine, but the questions keep coming in and I don't oh, want to ignore. Sorry. Uh, we, we have one asking whether the wallpaper was originally created here in, in the United States or was it imported from Europe? Do you know? Oh, uh, I don't I don't know. And I don't know that we know. How, how about the heating of the mansion? Is is that uh, system functioning? Oh my yeah, uh, uh, that, yes, uh, through certain what portions of What kind of, of a system? Uh... There's, it's a hot water system. Oh. Um, and there is an enormous furnace in the basement, um, which was the original one. Um, oh. And uh, there are huge radiators throughout. Now, the, the um, south side of the house, um, the heating system does not work through there. Um, and we are not reopening those pipes because we don't know what would happen. Nothing so, good would nothing good would happen. <laughs> so thanks again, Catherine. Thank you, Catherine. I, wonderful, we're, wonderful talk. We're going to Sorry for going on so long. Wonderful. Thank, wonderful. You. Wonderful. Thank you. Really great. Thanks Thank a lot. You. Thanks everybody. Thank